Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, everybody, great to have you back here at Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I'm KY4BDP, and what you're looking at is the moving of our new shack for our abandoned repeater site. And uh, we had the uh, shack delivered to the uh, farm or worldwide headquarters of uh, Elcara uh, at AC4DM and WM4LM's place. And we wanted to do some uh, maintenance, uh, but installation elements. Paint it, put a, a coating on the roof, um, or paint the floor on the inside, uh, put the roof uh, coating on it, and install the electrical. We wanted to do that on the farm, it would make things a lot easier. And then, once that was done, it was ready for transportation to its new location in Monticello, Kentucky. So here we're just uh, following the uh, trailer, or the truck in this case, the rollback that's going to carry it, and the uh, truck made it up the hill, although there was one power line that kind of got uh, a little bit dicey, and here he is actually driving that shack back in where the old, re uh, old shack is, and it's kind of tight. Now, we cut down branches and trees. You guys have seen some of that in some of the previous videos, and so he pretty much had the space that he needed. Well, there were a couple of branches here and there that touched the shack, but it wasn't nearly as bad as it would have been if we hadn't put that work in ahead of time. And what was really great about this delivery, and I know it's just a delivery of a shack, was how professional and how great this guy was at getting the shack exactly where we wanted it. Because again, this was a tight area. You can see we're brushing up against a cedar tree there. But on balance, he was able to move this truck in ways that I would not have thought possible. And as we'll see in some upcoming snippets, positioning the shack exactly where we wanted it. Now there you can see the actual pole that we had put in for the electrical service. 200 amps, we, we won't need all that, but that was what was put in. It has not been uh, turned on yet. And that bare spot of dirt next to the pole, kind of in the shade, is where we're going to be placing the new shack. And it's basically going to butt up against the old shack that we just really can't use anymore because it just doesn't uh, uh, hold out water very well. Keep in mind, the old shack's like 40-something years old, maybe older. So he's positioning this truck, again, to get it in a position to where he can lower that shack into its new location. Folks, we were so excited to be there that day. We've been removing trees, removing branches. In fact, if you look, look at how much sunshine is getting into this location. If you go back to the first video and the second video before we started taking out a lot of the trees and branches that did not need to be there anymore, you can see how dark it is. And it stayed very wet all the time. Now, with a lot of those trees removed, we still got quite a few to remove yet so that they don't interfere with the guy lines of the tower. We're going to get even more light into this area and uh, be less susceptible to, to, to limb damage from ice storms and things of that nature. So you can see that he's lowering the shack here uh, to get it close to position to where it needs to be. It actually has to come back quite a bit because, again, it's going to be very close to the old shack when he's finished, and we'll see that coming up in just a moment. So my job is just to film this. Don, AC4DM, is making sure that it's placed where we need it. And this guy was literally a an expert at getting this thing off and jiggling it just right, using chains, using a pulley to pull it in one direction or another as a part of positioning it where we needed it. We mainly employed this guy to transport it where we needed it. We didn't realize we were getting a guy that has done this many, many times before. And uh, put a shout out to SNH Towing. They, they just did a wonderful guy, and Kevin is the fellow here that's uh, doing the work for us. And again, he knew this, this truck and its equipment forwards and backwards. Here he's scooting it to the right a little bit. Uh, because he couldn't get the, the truck at exactly the angle that he needed. He was really close. So you can see he's pulling it off to one side. And you can see he's already pushed it back really close to the old shack. And at this point, he's basically just pulling the truck out from underneath the 
shed itself. So you can see the air conditioner is already installed, and um, we could once this gets put in place, we can begin the work of how are we going to connect it to the electrical pole, which has to be done correctly and up to code. So now the shack is on the ground, but we're not done. That's great. It's in. It's within six inches of where we wanted it, which was phenomenal. We got some uh, bricks underneath it or some uh, concrete uh, pavers so that it's not on the ground itself, but it's not level. So the next part of this is getting the shack level. But again, at this point, we're just checking everything and making sure that it's where we want it and that we're happy with the orientation. And uh, AC4DM there is uh, unlocking and just double checking things on the inside. There wasn't anything on the inside but that air conditioner. So we're ready for what is essentially going to be the leveling of the shed itself. So here we've got it placed. You can kind of see it before leveling. Now we're getting out the jacks and the, the level itself, and we want to level it left to right and front to back. So we're utilizing this particular jack that, of course, AC4DM just had laying around, and uh, we are raising it so that we can begin to place not only the pavers, but also uh, potentially some wood blocks just to make sure that we're good. Uh, this is on the back side. We're doing the same thing, and uh, we had to move some dirt around. We also had to put in some shims to make sure that it was going to be level. And, of course, AC4DM is just pumping hard. He's not the youngest guy out there, but, man, he works harder than anybody I've ever known. And uh, here we're just inserting those blocks, and uh, you'll see Chris coming up here in just a second, inserting some of those shims to make sure that it's going to be balanced and not wiggling on the uh, pavement. So uh, once that part was taken care of, now we could focus on those aspects of the shed that is going to allow a repeater to run, and that's hooking up electrical. Now that's going to be in part six, is hooking up the electrical, uh, but we'll show you we did have to begin digging a, a trench here in just a little bit. So we're just finishing up a little bit on some of those blocks and those shims to make sure that it was going to be level. And then AC4DM is going to try shaking the shack, and we got on the inside as well to see if it would move at all, and it did not move once we had all of this leveling taking place. Probably took, I don't know, probably the, the delivery was one day, so that probably took an hour, and then the leveling piece here was uh, the next day that we worked on it uh, to begin uh, getting it ready for the repeater, and uh, this probably took 30 minutes, maybe. 30, 35 minutes, somewhere in that ballpark. We still have a lot of trees to remove, branches to take down, because the tower uh, is in a wonderful position, but over the years has not really been kept up very well. So we have a lot of trees underneath the guy lines and interfering with the guy lines that we have to remove. Here we're digging the ditch, or the trench, if you will, uh, between the pole and where we're going to go in on the uh, shed itself. And again, where that goes in and how that connects will be in the next video. And now we've moved on to removing a lot of those trees that are still in and around the shack. Now, the original trees that we were getting was to get more light in there and to allow the electrical service to be installed. These trees are actually interfering with the guy lines of the tower. We have guy lines in three directions. And this is on the south side, uh, and uh, you can see KY4CKP is going to town on this tree. Uh, really tall, well, relatively tall for a pine tree in this area, about 60 feet tall. Uh, and so we're getting it to where we can actually have it fall in a particular direction. So we're definitely taking a chunk out of it uh, to uh, get it to fall. And then uh, Chris continues to work on it a little bit here as it's going to fall in the next little snippet. Uh, we're using just cordless chainsaws, uh, but KK4YUG, who's also in this video, uh, brought his uh, uh, gasoline-powered chainsaw. So when we had the really big trees that had to be cut up into sections, he took care of the heavy work. Uh, but this is probably as big a tree as you want to cut <laughs> with one of these cordless saws. Uh, but it works, and that's what we liked. I had mine out there. He had his out there. We had you know two batteries each for both of them, and we could get a lot of work done. And what's great is they're light, and you can cut branches off easily, and so on. And now Chris has just about got it cut to where it's going to fall. There she goes. And if you watch closely, you can see the gap in the tree get bigger and bigger. There she goes. And you feel a little bit like Paul Bunyan. So, yeah, removing some trees. Uh, 
you know, a lot of times people say, well, Brian, why are you cutting down trees? These are actually in the guidelines, or they're going to interfere with the guidelines if we let them sit. It's like removing trees from where you see power lines. If you ever notice power lines, they don't allow trees to grow up inside of those uh, uh, because of ice and so forth. And we do get some ice. So here, um, KK4YUG got the gasoline-powered version of a chainsaw out so we could cut this much longer piece. And we also had another tree that we cut down that was actually even bigger than this. So for this part of the abandoned repeater site, our shed is now delivered. It's now in its permanent location. It has been leveled. The electrical pole is there, ready for us to hook up into it, which will be covered in part number six. And we're just about ready to start moving repeaters into this shack. We're talking about a two meter repeater, a D star repeater, a packet digipeter, uh, a six meter repeater may go up here and possibly even either the transmit or the receive for 10 meters. So we're excited to start getting gear in here and you guys following us along. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association 73s.